Mike, how are you this morning? Clay, how are you? Good. <laughs> you okay? What? Oh, what did I miss? Oh no, no, I, I, I didn't know if you had more to expound upon. Than how no, you... I'm great. I'm oh, happy. Okay. We're heading to New York a day early this weekend. My son and my wife coming with me. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a great day. It's you got an update? Week. You got an update on Luke Keekley? Nothing yet. They put him in the concussion evaluation process last night, which surprised a lot of people. It, it felt like just watching it on TV, and of course we don't speculate on injuries, but you have thoughts go through your head that there was some sort of dire diagnosis that had been given to him in the moment, possibly some sort of a leg injury, torn Achilles, whatever, that caused him to react the way he did. He was reacting with a sense of finality that his season's over, yeah. and that's what confused a lot of people when we heard that it was a concussion, but he went through a concussion last year. He missed several games. And, you know, we don't know po- privately what these guys go through when they're dealing with a concussion. You have headaches. You have light sensitivity. You have concerns. You have fears. And, um, you know, he, he presumably does not want to go through again what kept him out of action for nearly a month in 2015. Yeah, I didn't know if people talked about his knee at all because it was bent awkwardly. And I, I don't know if you know in the moment – like there's something really severe with a concussion, as you do a knee injury, the shortness of breath. So I thought it was more of those than it was the concussion that had him so emotional. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I thought that they were going to have to lift him up. That's what surprised me when he stood up and got on the cart. That, well, wait a minute. I thought he had a broken leg or something where the doctors came out and said, hey, look, buddy, you're done. Um, you know, we're going to, you got to, you, you have whatever injury it is that is going to keep you out for the rest of the year. That was how I interpreted the, the reaction, but, uh, you know, he's been there with that concussion, and when you love the sport, you love your teammates, you want to be available, and you go into this great unknown of when you're going to get cleared to play again, and you're going to be missing games while this team is trying to turn things around and get back into the playoff chase. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a tough moment for a guy who clearly has given a lot of himself to his profession. How'd you get involved in the Aaron Rodgers discussion here, the back and forth that's going on? Well, look, here's what happened, Dan. After they lost to the Colts, he came out and said that they didn't have any energy on the sidelines. And then after they lost to the Titans, he came out and said they need to have a healthy fear that if you don't do your job, you're going to get, you're going to get cut. And in both instances, the head coach of the football team is the guy ultimately responsible, whether it's ensuring that there's energy on the sidelines during a game, whether it's instilling the fear in the players that if they don't do their jobs, they're not going to have those jobs. And I just felt like there was a passive-aggressive thing going on with Aaron Rodgers, who's a smart guy, who knows what he says and understands the implications when he says these things publicly at a press conference after a loss. I, I just read that, and I interpret that as there's a problem between him and his head coach. And, you know, what, whatever he said, it, it prompted Mike McCarthy to pull the Stuart Smalley routine on Monday where he says, I'm a highly successful NFL coach. Whoever says that? But regardless of how successful you are, you don't come out and say that. And it just led me to believe that there's real tension between these guys. And that's what prompted someone at his locker to ask him about it. And he said the criticism of McCarthy is ridiculous. I wish somebody would have followed up by saying, well, but Aaron, who, who were you criticizing when you said that there wasn't energy on the sidelines? And who are you criticizing when you're saying that there isn't a healthy fear that guys are going to lose their jobs if they don't do their jobs? So I think there's more to this, and I tend to think I struck a nerve. And, uh, hey, look, I bet, you know, when you do this as long as we have, Dan, you get called out a lot. I, I really don't care about it anymore. Um, as long as I get my name right, and he did, well, you know, I'm fine with it. Because I, I, I don't think I did anything that, that is – "Quote unquote wrong." I think it's an accurate read on the situation, and uh, you know, if if it's not, then why is he saying these things publicly? So you're you're okay with any publicity? Is good publicity, even if Aaron Rodgers is critical of you or your website? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. Yeah, any publicity is good publicity as long as they get your name right. Absolutely, what with some it? limited exceptions. But this one, I, they played it on ESPN. What the hell were they thinking at ESPN? I thought that was great. <laughs> it's not like people are going to suddenly stop coming to the website. If they think it's a bunch of crap, they'll come check it out and see if it is crap. And if, if it is, I'll stand on my crap. I, I take pride in my crap. And uh, I, I tend to think that far more often than not, we have an accurate read on what's happened at the NFL level. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't like it. I think that's what this comes down to. I've been reading the Jeff Perlman book about Brett Favre. And, you know, it's a different mindset in Green Bay. And the, the media isn't as aggressive as, say, it would be in New York. And I think Aaron Rodgers has been spoiled by that over the years. And, and there have probably been things he said at times 
that he would have been criticized heavily for in other markets. And he doesn't like it. You know, we know he's sensitive. He's so sensitive, he's sensitive about being sensitive. Remember that 60 Minutes <laughs> profile they did, and he complained because it portrayed him as sensitive, and they issued a statement saying, see, he's proving our point. He is sensitive. So it doesn't surprise me that it landed on his radar screen. It doesn't surprise me he reacted. And, I, I mean, I still got to do what I think is right, and I got to say what I think is right. We're trying to service the audience. And uh, if somebody calls me out for it, you know, I just, it's, you just kind of let it roll off your back and you keep moving. Thank you, Mike. I'll see you on Sunday. Have a great weekend. All right, see you, buddy. That's Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.